Hi and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. For the free wire tutorial this week on the YouTube channel, I'd like to share a very, very easy way which you can attach an undrilled quartz shard or quartz point into a wire pendant. I've got a couple of samples here. I've got a watermelon coated shard and I've got an aqua aura coated shard. They're both natural quartz points and they're very very gently tapered as is very very typical with the shards that you can achieve out there in the marketplace. If you'd like to join me down at the board I'll show you these a little bit more closely and then we'll move through our very easy tutorial together. So the quartz shards that you can find in the marketplace are very often tapered they tend to form in a slightly tapered fashion and uh, what we're going to do is use that tapering nature to enable us to secure the piece of crystal to a back plate. That's what it looks like without the crystal, we'll get to de designing that in a second. We're going to use the fact that it tapers to our advantage and ensure that this doesn't come apart. I've seen lots of pieces of jewellery at markets and online where it's simply a matter of time before the whole thing comes apart. When I'm making jewellery either to sell or to gift, I want to ensure that it's going to last and perform its function as something that's pretty to look at, but it's also wearable. There's no point having something that just becomes squished the second you pick it up. So we're going to work on this design which is a wiggly wire on the rear on the rear of the design sorry and then a very very simple wrapped loop up at the top that's what we're going to make today. At the end of the video I'll talk you through how you can make a slightly more complex variation of the design using this kind of swoopy design on the rear but what this does instead is gives you two wires up at the top instead of a simplistic wrapped loop you can have two wires to make a slightly more elegant or elaborate bale this is what we're going to work on today though so to show you that design without the crystal in place this is what we're going to make absolutely suitable for total beginners to wire work and really very very satisfying knowing that you can attach one of your undrilled crystal shards into position and to know that it will stay there nice and safely. So let's just pop those two over to the side. This is the crystal that we're going to work with. What you'll find is that they're very frequently hexagonal sided but you'll have one side which is a little broader and that's the one that we're going to put into position against that wiggly back plate. You have to excuse my breathing today, I'm having a bit of an asthma flare up, so if I'm a little bit breathless, many apologies. So for the first part of the design, we are going to use some one millimeter or 18 gauge wire, and I have just around 10 inches. Now this is probably a little bit more than we need, but I do like to start with more than I need, just in case I change my mind about what I'm going to do part of the way through. So as ever, I'm going to begin by warming that wire through and again this is approximately 10 inches of that one millimeter or 18 gauge giving that a really lovely warm through to get fluidity into the metal before we commence wrangling it so I'm going to create a double loop if your shard down at the base a double wrapped uh, coil rather sorry if your shard is very very narrow you'll probably want to make that quite diminutive so our shard that we're going to work with is a little bit narrow so we're going to accommodate that into the design the piece that I've got here could be used for a slightly wider shard unless you wanted to have some of that poking out either side underneath your design which I think is actually quite acceptable but the choice is absolutely yours so I'm going to start on this piece we're making together quite close to the end of my round nose pliers and just start by forming a coil shape and I'm just going to wrap that around twice quite tightly and we're just going to make sure that that's nice and firmly put together. I've sized it down just slightly from the demonstration piece because the lowest of my point, the lowest section rather of my point is quite narrow and I'd like to hide this coil behind that section. So I'm not going to worry about marking the wire because ideally I'm going to hammer this in a little while anyway. So if there are tool marks, don't fret. We're going to return now to our round nose pliers and just grab a hold of that and start forming a gentle swoop coming up and away from that double coiled start section. So for the next part, what I'm going to do is put those round nose pliers back in and then twist the wire around in the opposite direction. So you get a series of S bends. Now you can tighten these up a little bit if you want to. 
and you can use those round nose pliers just removing them it builds up very very quickly and it's a super easy technique so just keep removing the pliers from the design you can play around with how small or how large those swoopy loops are and what we're looking to do is to fill approximately 90% of the shards length with these loops now if you go crazy and you get them slightly longer than you anticipated you can just slightly concertina that down so that it becomes a little bit smaller and i'll show you how to do that in a second but let's just continue making those s bends like so until we get around about 90% of the way along the design and the reason i say 90% of the length of the shard which is pretty much where we are, is because I want to then turn an upright at the centre point. If we imagine that there's a straight line starting at the middle of your double wrapped coil and it's travelling at the halfway point all the way along those swooshy bits, it's not terribly straight at the moment, I'll take a second to do that in a moment, we want that line to pass through the end here and that is where we're going to create an upright section to our design. So we pull that angle away and then just pop it down into the correct orientation. You can see that we've got that around about 90% of the way along. And that just gives us an option to uh, allow the crystal shard to drop down a little bit. So that if you want to, you can definitely hide that squiggly wire design at the back of the piece. So with a design like this, you can take as much or as little time as you want to make it absolutely perfect. I'm just going to take a few moments to get those little S-bends to all stack one on top of the other so it's nice and straight. It's just small adjustments to make sure that I'm happy with the aesthetic value of the piece. Even though it's going to sit behind the crystal, I do like to have that looking good. So let's just head back down to the board and I'll show you how you can make those fine adjustments. And then we're going to hammer the thing, we're going to smash it flat to give it some lovely strength and rigidity which is what we need this technique relies heavily on tension so let's get back down to the board so I'm just going to use my bent chain nose pliers to get the whole thing nice and flat as if it's between two panes of glass we're working at this moment in two dimensions only and you can take a second if you need to just make any small refinement refinements rather in that little stack of s bends what we're looking for is to have the imaginary straight line traveling from the center of that double coil all the way up in the middle of each of those s bends and coming out at the top in that straight line which will become our simple wrapped loop i'm just going to give that a very gentle squish up at the top but not much further than say five or six millimeters because i want this section of the wire to remain nice and fluid so i can generate a lovely wrapped loop in a few minutes so i'm going to grab my miniature block from our friends at impress art and my lovely chasing hammer from the guys at Beedalon. And we're just going to give this a little bit of a gentle tapping. Again, I'm going to protect up at the top to make sure that that stays nice and soft. And I'm going to try and protect my fingers. It doesn't take long to achieve the level of rigidity that I'm after. I just want this to not be too wiggly. And of course, you can probably see that I have put a little bit of a tool mark on the edge here and that my S-bends aren't entirely perfect. I'm actually not going to worry about it because I can see that my shard fits over the surface. And once those bends have been, I don't know if the correct word is diffracted by the crystal, because I'm not a scientist, I'm an artist, uh, you're not really going to see any minute differences in the wiggles, but do feel free to take as much time as you like to. So what I'm going to do now is put some extra warmth and heat up here at the top. And we're going to generate a simplistic wrapped loop. So if you prefer to, what you can do is generate a very tiny loop up at the top and then add this into a bale of your choosing, which then has some movement. So you can definitely go for something a bit more complicated if you want to. I'm just teaching a very, very simple wrapped loop today. So I'm allowing around about a centimetre, just under half an inch from the top of my last S-bend before I put a nice forwards bend into the design. 
I'm then going to grab my bail makers to put a nice large shape in the top there. So I'm going to use number four. There's Joey getting in on the act. Joey says hello. And then we're going to just wrap around the neck of the design. So this is the first time we're deviating from that two dimensional aspect. We're going at 90 degrees to create a bail. And we're going to wrap that around. Now I've made that a little bit loose up at the top. If that happens to you, you can pinch everything together and just tighten that up slightly. And then you should be able to wrap the tail of the wire around to give yourself a reasonably neat wrapped loop. But what we're looking for is strength and longevity in our designs. So I'm going to bring this as far down as the top of my t uppermost little S bend. So because we're working with 18 gauge one millimeter wire, that's starting to get a little bit challenging. If you find that challenging, you can employ the use of a second pair of flat facing pliers just to help you get those coils nice and tidy. What I'm looking to do is finish as close to the S bend as possible, trim away the excess, still a very usable amount of wire just there. So that will go into the scrap pot for later use. And then as ever, we're looking to make sure that there aren't any sticky outy bits. We want that to be super neat and tidy so it doesn't catch on anything. Hair, skin, scarves, clothes, that kind of thing. So ideally, you will have got yourself a nice wrapped loop up at the top. I'm just going to support that and compress the spring. Like so, just tightening up those coils. If you wanted to, you can very, very gently hammer this section as well. Or you can apply pressure with flat facing, opposing flat faces on your pliers. It's entirely up to you. But that is the crux of the design. So for the last piece of the puzzle, it's not much of a puzzle, it's a nice easy technique, we're just going to apply a little bit of tension with our finer gauge wire to corset wrap that beautiful shard onto the back plate. Let's head down to the board and finish this design off together. With my Aqua Aura demonstration piece, I was lucky enough to have a little bit of a divot at the front of the crystal just here, which meant that I could use a slightly lighter wire. So this piece is made with 0.4 or 26 gauge wire. Because you've got this little bit of a belly, I suppose, on the gemstone, I was able to just go for a slightly lighter wire and know that there's absolutely no way that's coming out. However, I would urge you to use a slightly heavier wire. So I'm going to be working with 0.5 millimeter gauge or 24 gauge wire. And I have here approximately 12 inches. Now to start off with, what we're going to do is wrap five times around the section of back plate that's closest to that double coil. So you'll probably need to leave around about an inch of wire. And we're just going to start coiling that around to ensure that we get a really good grip on that wire. Now, because we hammered it, we've changed the shape of the wire from round to slightly more oval, slightly more rectangular, depending on how hard you hit it, which means that when you get the wire wrapped around, let's just take this to a place where it will be against the crystal, trim that last little bit away. Once we've got that into position, what we're going to do is very, very carefully and cautiously, gently, squish that wire so that it sits on that slightly more oval profile of wire. I'm just going to take that around one more time and have that coming around on what will be the right hand side of the crystal pendant when it's finished. Now the reason I'm saying be careful and cautious is that we don't want to make the wire brittle. We're trying to prevent it from spinning around our backplate wire. We change the profile of this when we hit it, and it means that once you give that a very gentle squish, because we're going to start using tension to wrap this design, what we want to do is to prevent this coil from uncoiling. So giving that a little bit of a squish, just like so, means that the coil is now also slightly more oval, slightly more rectangular in its form, much less likely to spin when you start applying pressure in this direction. So let's pop the crystal onto the form. That looks pretty decent to me. What we're going to do is take the wire now across the front of the design. And what we want to do is to form fit it. So if I just bring that upwards, I know it goes slightly blurry when it's closer to the camera. We want that wire to be form fitted around the front of the crystal. And then we're going to flip the design over onto the back. I might switch grip actually. 
we want to make sure that our little wiggly S bends are centralised on the back of the crystal. Holding that form fitted piece of the finer gauge wire onto the front, I'm going to bring the tail of the finer wire up and over the next section of S bend like so. So we've wrapped all the way around the crystal once and I've brought quite a tense wrap of wire over the surface of the design, looped just one time. If you want to wrap multiple times, you absolutely can. But I'm just going to go for a single wrap each time. If you want to, as I say, you can wrap a couple more times and then it relies less on tension. But I'm demonstrating that you can just use tension to set this crystal because of that slight taper. So we're going to now flip the design over, bring the tail of wire across the surface again, form fitting it around the crystal, the nice, it's quite subtle facets on this it's made by nature this is how it's grown so we're going to bring that all the way across the back and you can see that we've got an s bend nearest so what we're going to do is take the wire over the top of that s bend and then very subtly just lift up that back plate form bring the wire underneath it and again with tension we're going to corset the crystal to that back plate and then back across the front with a great deal of tension, form fitting to the crystal's shape. And then we're just going to repeat that design. You can do this quite quickly, but it does pay to just slow down and make sure that you're happy. Great deal of tension again into that S bend, form fitted across the front of the crystal, into the next S bend, pull that nice and firmly into place, back over the surface of the crystal, into the next S bend, back in the same direction from whence it came, back over the surface of the crystal and into that last S bend. So let's just push down very firmly and give that last little bit of wire a gentle tug. Now, if you have enough, you could go over the surface one last time. I think I may have cut my wire slightly short for the size of my crystal. This was more like a 10 inch off cut. It should have been 12 inches. But what we're going to do is just tie off at the top here and wrap at least five times. Now, very, very gently lifting that back plate away will give you slightly easier access. What you don't want to do is stress the wire out. So what I'm going to do here is wrap five times around that last little S bend. Let's crunch up those little wires so that they sit in a nice tidy coil rather than a messy, baggy awfulness. And bring that last little bit of wire through so that we have that fifth wrap. So what I want to do is, where possible, end that finer gauge wire as close to the point between the back plate and the crystal itself, where it'll have less impact on outwards things like hair and clothes, etc. So again, we're going to very, very gently squish that little coil of wire I'm going to use the curved side of my pliers just to push that down against the back plate. And then what we can do is very, very gently bring this elongated wrapped loop that we made for a bale up and forwards, which will stop the crystal from falling upwards if you take it off and just pop it on the desk. This should pass a shake test, so let's give it a go. There we go, I've shaken the camera. What you can do is take a lot more time than I have today and ensure that you get a close form fit to your crystal. You can obviously get a slightly little bit more of a tension on those back wires. You can wrap multiple times. It just slows down the video. And I know that you want to see a technique, not me blathering on for hours. Let's just put those two side by side. So that's a 0.4 or 26 gauge. That's a 0.5 or 24 gauge wire wrap. Very, very simple technique, just using an S bending back plate. Just as an addendum, I'm going to show you very quickly how you can make this in a slightly different fashion, utilizing the same corseting technique, but giving you two wires at the top to make a woven bale if you prefer. I'm not going to do the whole tutorial because the actual technique itself is very similar. So for the alternative design, I'm going to just show you how to create this form at the back and then you can weave the, a slightly more complicated bale up at the top if you prefer. The actual technique of corseting is very, very similar. 
So you would just need to take the wires around the best points as you see them on that rear. So I have around about 15 inches of one millimeter or 18 gauge wire for this section of the tutorial. And I'm going to start around about probably one third of the way along and I'm just going to make a series of loops. So I'm going to use my round nose pliers to start off by making the first loop and I don't want a particularly large loop in the wire. What I do want is for that loop to sit flat on the line. Now if that doesn't quite happen for you, you can put your pliers back inside that form and just very very gently bring them together, warm that wire through as you go to get yourself a nice, almost like a bubble on that flat line. So let me just switch over so that the short side is on my non-dominant hand and the long side, you remember we started a third of the way in, the long side is over on my dominant hand. So what I'm going to do now is create a series of loops just by drawing that tail around in exactly the same way, like so. So you, you will probably want to have them be the same size, so you can just make that slightly smaller if you need to. And again, if you need that to sit down on the line, you can use those round nose pliers to your benefit. So I'm just going to make a relatively short segment, but obviously what you're looking to do is make it around about 80% of the length of the shard in question. I'm going to just go for three loops just to save you some time watching me blather on about a repeated technique. So there's my third loop in the design. What we're going to do now is just make sure that I'm happy with that loop and its orientation before we make a U shape down at the bottom of the design to make a final access point. Now you wouldn't be hammering this because if you hammered onto those points where the wire crosses around you would weaken the design rather than strengthen it. What I'm going to do is just take my fine uh, chain nose, bent chain nose pliers to make that circular or semicircular form down at the bottom reflect the size of the loops we made and then you would offer this up to your chosen shard. Actually to be fair that's probably would fit this shard anyway. And then we're just going to bring those wires together at the top an angle and then another angle so you've got a tapering design up there trying to reflect the positioning on those like so so that you've got your two wires up at the top which you can then use to weave into a slightly more elaborate woven bale but the technique for adding the crystal to the front of the back plate is exactly the same as we did with the wiggly one that we just worked up together a few moments ago well, I hope that you've enjoyed those two variations on a wire wrapped crystal shard or crystal point. Absolutely suitable for beginners. Just take your time and I hope that you enjoy the project as much as I do. Have yourself a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Hopefully slightly less croaky and breathy next time around. Bye for now.